Good evening, and welcome to Top Growth. Tonight, we're delving into the glamorous world of fashion, and in particular, the exciting revitalization of an iconic and legendary brand, Bill Blass. A classic American sportswear label, Bill Blass was in its heyday in the 70s and 80s, offering beautiful and timeless styles. Its founder and namesake, Bill Blass, was admired by some of America's top fashion designers, including Carolina Herrera and Oscar de la Renta. Favored by First Ladies Jacqueline Kennedy and Nancy Reagan, as well as celebrities Liza Minnelli and Barbara Walters, it was seen on runways, in the White House, on film screens, television, and in boardrooms across America. After the death of Mr. Blass in 2002, the company was led by numerous fashion industry leaders and slowly over time, the brand lost its appeal and ultimately folded in 2012. However, four years later, it's back and making a reappearance. The board tapped 35-year fashion industry leader Stuart Goldblatt as its president and chief operating officer. Goldblatt achieved tremendous success at both Macy's and Bloomingdale's, and under his direction, Bill Blass is making a big comeback in re-emerging as a fashion player. Joining me today is Stuart Goldblatt. Welcome. Thank you very much. It's it, great to be here. It's great to see you thank and thank you. you for making the trip up from New York City this morning to join us and uh, we're looking forward to hearing all about your exciting endeavor with Bill Blass. Yes, I'm excited to tell you about it. Thank you. I really enjoyed attending the um, the relaunch party in New York mm -hmm. and was so impressed with the numerous new designs and the gorgeous handbag collection and accessories and interesting designs. So tell us a little bit about why you chose Bill Blass. What, what made you decide to take this great challenge and be at the helm? Well, thank you for coming to the event. I mean, it was pelting sheets of rain <laughs> and you drove down from Washington, from uh, Westboro to come and visit us. So I was uh, really impressed by your determination. And we had about 200 people there later that evening after you were there. That's great. So let me tell you a little bit about uh, Bill Blass and why I took on this challenge. I had my own advisory group after I had retired from uh, Macy's Inc. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was actually doing some consulting work for the Bill Blass Group board. And it was really about they own the name and they wanted to develop a strategy to possibly bring it back to market. Mm -hmm. So what we did was really three things. We took consumer insights first, industry insights second, and then we spoke to the fashion press. What do you think about Bill Blass? Mm -hmm. And what came out of that was that the fashion press, because of really kind of a rocky few years was somewhat lukewarm on it. The retailer was also lukewarm on it, mm -hmm. but the customer identified with the brand, knew the brand, and was a resounding 89% said, we would love to see Bill Blass as a fashion brand come back to the market. Mm -hmm. So that's why I took on the challenge, because mm -hmm. the consumer said to us, bring it back to the market and great, give us great product and we'll figure out how to make it work. Oh, that's terrific. Mm -hmm. So what were some of the challenges though? I mean, initially, after a, a brand has been in existence for so long and it had so many wonderful reviews and it was loved and adored by so many people back in the 70s and 80s, and then having gone through you know, quite a challenging period of time to, to listen to what the consumers wanted, to bring it back, to be excited about it, what, though, are some of the challenges? Because it's very difficult to reinvent a brand in any industry, but in particularly a fashion brand, with um, just so many competitors out there. There's so many new fashion uh, designers that are emerging. And also, you've got your stable uh, designers all over the world that are really continuously pushing new gorgeous um, couture designs. So That's how? Right. So what are some of the challenges that you initially had to face and, and actually get through before you could take it to the step that you, where you are right now? We identified that the brand awareness of Bill Blass was very high, mm -hmm. so we started there. The other aspect is, is that we have to realize what the market is, exactly what you said, uh, much nicer than I will say it is that who needs to buy another dress, who needs another designer, who needs another blouse? Nobody does. Right. 
So what we just identified was a market of women between the ages of 25 and 35. They're just getting out of their fast fashion stage. They're on to a new stage in their careers, in their lives, and are looking for something that has a little bit more style, a little bit more quality related to the products that they're buying. Hmm. The second piece of that is really how do we reach them and what we also realized from our, our consumer insights was that they consume information on social media at, at a voracious rate. Mm -hmm. And that's really the way to speak to them. So we have the brand awareness, even if it's on the periphery. We are able to speak to them on social media. And we launched the brand e-commerce only because that's what the consumer said is their first stop as far as exploring new brands. Interesting. So you really, in this whole rebirth of the brand, you're looking at a much younger target audience yes. than it used to be. Um, and so do, are there any plans to um, design uh, fashion products that will really um, engage the demographic of yesteryear? Or you, do you have a laser beam focus on a much younger demographic moving forward? The younger demographic, 25 really to almost uh, 45, is mm -hmm. are the are the consumers that spend a lot of money mm -hmm. on apparel, handbags, and shoes. Okay. So we're targeting that consumer. Consumer over 45 years old really isn't focused on fashion. Yes, there are some outliers, but generally they are not in. Uh, they're in different stages in their life and not spending on on clothing. They have other priorities in their life. So that's a perfect segue mm -hmm. into um, another question, which is why Chris Ben. So you mm -hmm. you hired as one of the first things that you did is you really looked to find a creative director that could help you reinvent the brand and design fashions that would obviously appeal to this demographic. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about um, your the, what you went through in order to find someone to take this role of creative director and ultimately why you chose Chris Benz to lead the charge in the design area of yes. the product. Mm -hmm. the, the reason we did that is because what came from our consumer insights is that the, they know the brand but people buy product first mm -hmm. and brand second and we knew that Chris with his pedigree would do three things for us. Number one, it would smooth the fashion industry press that there was somebody of gravitas running the brand as creative director. Mm -hmm. The second thing is we wanted an American designer. Right. Chris is from Seattle, Washington and uh, has very similar lineage as far as Parsons graduate, CFDA, which is the Fashion Industry uh, Designers Association, uh, award-winning designer. And uh, the third thing is that he understood, he understands the color for uh, that, that consumer. And, and the last piece of that is that he has over 200,000 social media followers oh. uh, among Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. So that was a key element as far as how we were going to reach our, our consumers. So he really brought the package. He brought the design savvy, the um, passion, obviously, for design and fashion flair, the history um, as, a, as a creative director at other entities, and also that whole knowledge of the demographic that you're trying to reach, the social media following. And um, it sounds like a lot of respect and um, admiration from the folks that had followed him. So automatically you know you, you've got this uh, wonderful immediate audience of folks that um, adorned you know anything that he really did so um, I think that's great and I, I really want to talk about the colors because one of the things that I noticed particularly at your launch party mm -hmm. and subsequently online because mm -hmm. I've been perusing the website and mm -hmm. I've enjoyed a couple of things that um, have been just lovely but um, the colors are bright they're um, there's a, a notion of a candy. You have this candy theme going. So can you tell us a little bit about the colors, what the colors are, their names, and, um, and what this whole candy aspect is about? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Chris Benz at his, his finest. Uh, he is known as the Prince of Color. Oh. So when one goes to BillBlast.com, they're going to see a very different experience online than one would at 
other brands. Normally it's a white background, there's a top hero shot and then cuts of different items. We have everything basically on a color background and each item is vibrant color. Uh, simply because that's what the customer was saying. I know where to buy my basics. I know where to buy my core items and my pencil skirt. Mm -hmm. But where do I find that special thing? Yeah. And uh, being online at BillBlast.com, we realized that the customer is really looking for something special, or as Chris Ben says, it's the cherry on top of your outfit. You have all your basics. You'll go to BillBlast.com to say, I want something different, I want something new, I want something exciting, but it's not a place for basics. Right. And so, so Bill Blast, who said um, uh, the, the red, the whole red dress, yes. you know, and um, when in doubt, wear red. Wear, when in doubt, wear red. And so, um, the, the, I noticed that the logo colors were, um, it's like a gold color. Yes. So was there any research that went into the decision not to use red, mm -hmm. um, but to use gold mm -hmm. as your background color? Because the, the boxes come in and they're gorgeous. And, yes. and I know that when I ordered my lovely cherry bag, yes. um, which I love, it Good. was, um, it was uh, the, the box was in this the mm -hmm. build Blast brand mm -hmm. gold. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about why gold. Yes. Um, considering red was such a um, an association with um, with Mr. Blast. That's right. That's right. In fact, um, when in doubt, wear red is trademarked uh, by Bill Blast, mm -hmm. and uh, we own that trademark. But we didn't want to be so obvious about it. So every month we change the color of the website, the background color, the size of the boxes depends on the color, where the color depends on the size of the boxes actually. So we have the two things going on, but if you go to our website, this subtle message of red, we never have a model without red lipstick. Hmm. It's a rule that no matter who is taking a picture of Bill Blast product, if there's a model, she must be wearing red lipstick. So. Oh. That's really where it, that comes from. That's great. Yeah. So you're mm -hmm. still integrating the yes. whole trademark aspect of in the history, bringing the history right. into it. That's, That's so right. great. Um, tell us about the frilly blouse. That mm -hmm. seems to be, is that a hot seller? You've got this great blouse that's yes. in all different colors mm -hmm. and varieties, mm -hmm. and one is like multicolored. And that's right. I recently saw, I think it might have been on your Twitter feed or perhaps Facebook or it could have even been in a fashion magazine, um, the blouse in just pure white. And, mm -hmm. it, and it had some kind of a tagline about, you know, this is the new white blouse mm -hmm. or the essential white blouse. Tell us a little bit about the design of that blouse because I think that, I, I mean, it's perfect for any age. I know that your your target audience is what it is, but I could see women of any age buying that blouse in any one of its colors and looking absolutely glamorous and spectacular, mm -hmm. even in a pair of jeans. That's right. So tell us about that and the concept behind it and um, and just how it's doing in mm -hmm. sales and, and whether it's been a, a great um, um, add-on to your, your line. Yes, thank, thanks. It's a good question because uh, really since uh, Bill Blast started in the 70s, was a certain period of time that people were dressing in a very um, peacock type of manner, mm -hmm. lots of uh, bell bottoms, right. lots of ruffles, uh, lots of, um, uh, I would say, sailor type of open sleeves. Mm -hmm. So, but that was really a throwback to the 20s. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the 70s represented the 20s. And um, so the, the reference to ruffles is one that, again, speaks to the website where we say at BillBlast.com, you, you're coming there for something special. Mm -hmm. So yes, the print that you're speaking to is actually from a wallpaper print from the 1920s. And then we redesigned that and copyrighted it for uh, our, our brand. It even has a Bill Blast signature in it. And uh, the white ruffle shirt has been a bestseller. And uh, again, it's, it's something that if we bought a lot of them, mm -hmm. it's not something you would see at Zara or H&M where it would be racks and racks of them because people don't buy racks and racks of them. They're really a special piece just to round out your outfit. So when you're wearing it, you feel great about it. Not everyone's wearing it up and down the street. 
and you can really feel good about it. And that's one of the nice things about the line right now is that there's so many interesting pieces mm -hmm. that you can add to your wardrobe and really add some spark and some sizzle mm -hmm. and some fun. Whether you want to be playful, whether you want to be savvy, mm -hmm. you can take any one of the pieces and just add them and all of a sudden you've changed your look you've changed your whole um, concept if you want to like the speckled blouse could be mm -hmm. a perfect party blouse That's where right. the white one mm -hmm. would be gorgeous in a in a boardroom if mm -hmm. you're trying to just be a little bit softer under a suit or just by itself or That's right. Um, That's right. so what is happening right now in the fashion industry overall um, is it growing do you see the markets um, uh, changing at all as we look towards the future. Mm -hmm. What what is the prediction for the future of the fashion industry according to what you what your your viewpoint is? The fashion industry is gigantic. Uh, it is shrinking though, but it is really a business that is. Um, it's over 1.7 trillion dollars, and women's is about. Uh, five five hundred billion of it. So it is a it is a gigantic business. Over the what's transpired over the last twenty years is that prices have gone down significantly. Mm -hmm. So actually, people are consuming fashion five times greater than they were twenty years ago because consumers are buying fast fashion and they're wearing it one or two times and disposing of it and going on to the next thing. So yes, it's a, been a seismic shift in the way people shop and what they want and what they deem is important to them. Overall, people are spending less on fashion, and, uh, but there's still a, a gigantic market and there's always a desire for newness and that's why we determined that Bill Blast and BillBlast.com particularly would be the best entry into the market. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things that I was very impressed with was when we started talking, it was really before you launched the product mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. And I remember you saying that your initial goal was to launch the, re, um, the rebirth of the brand mm -hmm. after the first of the year. Yes. And I think we spoke in October or September. It was before you had your launch, your mm -hmm. official launch. And you decided that because you were ahead of schedule on the production and, um, and you had so much of the designs already in-house, you said, what the heck, let's just go ahead and, mm -hmm. and launch this product now. So you launched in November? Yes, Just we launched November, November 2nd, yes. November 2nd, mm -hmm. uh, which was uh, two months prior to the uh, scheduled launch, which That's is right. pretty much unheard of in any industry, mm -hmm. let alone That's the right. fashion industry. That's right. So how have the results been? What, has, uh, what have you seen? Are, are you um, ahead? Are you, uh, tell us a little bit about that. Well, there's, there's three good news uh, items I can share. Okay. One is we're very happy with the results. The second is the consumer is very happy with the results, and I'll explain a little bit more on that in a second. And, and the third, the board of directors is very happy with the results. That's great. The, uh, the, the, the way we measure the success, of course, is sales over plan. And the second way on e-commerce we measure success is return levels. So uh, the normal return level on e-commerce in apparel, handbags, is about 20 to 25 percent. And shoes has a mammoth return level of almost 40 percent. So as a whole, having all of those categories, after two and a half months, we're at 14 percent returns, which means that people are buying it, they're keeping it. And so that's an excellent indication for the acceptance uh, of the brand. That's fantastic. The three negatives to that are we launched in December and there was just a lot of noise promotionally in, in December. So as we were running our Google ads and sending emails, we were really not seen as much as we would have liked to have been seen. The, uh, the second negative to that is we launched early, but we only had spring product. Mm -hmm. So not sure I would do that again. We were very successful in the South because of that. Florida, Texas, uh, Georgia, we were very successful. And the third thing was that Chris Benz wasn't able to really dictate as much of uh, the influence on our launch as he would have liked to because we did it, we did it early. Mm -hmm. 
Stuart, there are so many gorgeous designs from Bill Blass over the years. Why can't you just rekindle them? Why can't mm -hmm. you just reuse them, modify them a little bit? It's an excellent question and one we're asked all the time. Chris is in our archives. We have over 1,100 dresses from runway shows that Chris uses as inspiration. But the analogy we make is similar to James Bond. We have to use the archives and previous design as a roadmap to the future, not as a blueprint for how we are going to build the business today. So I say it's similar to James Bond movies because if they didn't evolve, if the stars didn't change, if the storylines didn't change, if the technology of the filming didn't change, I don't think the James Bond series would be too exciting today with Sean Connery as James Bond. So we use that analogy, just things have to move on and the consumer wants new ideas and products that are current. So it's not your grandmother's Bill Blast. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. There's lots of your grandmother's Bill Blast on eBay. Right, exactly. <laughs> and if you want it, you can get it there. That's right. right. <laughs> That's right. Tell us about what is on tap for the future. So, so you have launched the Spring Align in November. Yes. Um, gloriously successful by all accounts, truly. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, so you had an early launch of Spring, but now what? Are you starting to incorporate new, newer designs? Are you? Um, what about summer so mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about what the future looks like so that if we go to billblast.com mm -hmm. um, now or in a couple of months what are some of the things that we're going to be able to see uh, to get us all excited and enthused about the potential of our mm -hmm. uh, upgrading our wardrobes well, I strongly uh, urge everyone to go to billblast.com as often as possible <laughs> and um, the reason for that is because we have a monthly cycle. So every month we'll be changing the background color and adding new items to the assortment. And we really have this point of view of being seasonless. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to have product. It's not about hot summer or cold winter for us yet. As we grow, we will have those items. But right now it's just about things that are more seasonless. If Chris determines that shirt dresses are a big idea, 90 days later, we're gonna convert the website to shirt dresses. We're gonna get them made uh, to, to his specifications and put them on the site and talk about them in a, in a big way. So it'll be categories, it'll be items, and uh, we're gonna be very aggressive about shoes because the uh, consumers have really engaged with us, been very happy about shoes, and again, knowing the, the uh, return rate to shoes, it's become uh, a big opportunity for us. Right, and the shoes mm -hmm. are really spectacular. I mean, you, your styles are so classic. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the colors are wonderful, and they go not only with the line, but mm -hmm. they will go with anything else that you have in your closet that doesn't even uh, you know, associate with the fashion mm -hmm. aspect of the, of the, um, the clothing. Um, are you looking to design uh, other shoes, integrate more shoes into the mix in yes. the coming months? Yes. And actually, the shoe shape that we have, the toe shape, yes. we actually pulled from our archive. It was from the 1940s, uh, the, the shape of that toe. And that's been very successful for us, as has the sneaker. And mostly because the whether it's a Sutton slip-on mm -hmm. sneaker or the Laverne, the it's comfortable. We put a uh, cushion insole. We don't really talk about it, but it's a cushion insole. So when people put that on, they say, this is the most comfortable shoe I've ever, <laughs> ever worn. It's a nice surprise. That's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the handbags, I have to say, of all of what you have in the line, the handbags, I just love them. Thank you. They're gorgeous. Thank Every you. style of them. And, and when I came back from the launch party, I'd posted a couple of photographs mm -hmm. of the bags on Facebook. Yes. And, you know, everyone was raving about them. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so are you looking to keep that as sort of um, your, your um, a classic design uh, designs for handbags and just integrate additional colors moving forward mm -hmm. or are you thinking about adding designs um, as you move forward in, in 2016 yes Deborah you know women love handbags and <laughs> shoes okay so we're gonna be very aggressive about new designs and keeping it in um, the aesthetic that 
that Chris has identified, which is a, a, an interesting, very beautiful leathers, but uh, a lot of it's been drawn from the archives. We have uh, lots of flaps that go over the bags. We have lots of accordion bags. We have bags that have been designed for the modern woman. So the smartphones fit in them, and uh, they're easily accessible, lots of pockets on the outside, beautiful custom hardware. So yes, that, that's going to be an identifying factor for Bill Blass, which wasn't when he was in his heyday in the, uh, in the 80s, um, it was not, it was mostly apparel. Right. And so does the future um, hold any retail floor uh, stores? For Bill Blass, is it going to be predominantly online, or do you have any uh, thoughts about opening up a flagship location mm -hmm. in in Manhattan someday, yes, yeah. or um, on a Rodeo Drive, mm -hmm. or um, we have in, big dreams. Palm Beach. <laughs> Are you thinking about big, big dreams? Right now, we're on our own website, BillBlass.com. Mm -hmm. We we were approached right after we launched by Orchard Mile which is another uh, e-commerce site. So we're on orchardmile.com. We'll also be on spring.com and list.com as they've reached out to us to say, we would like you to be part of our family. So that's all, that's all exposure for us and just reaches millions and millions of other customers that we don't have today. And the next step is for us to have a retail partner, a, a large store, that uh, we can develop an exclusive relationship with. That hasn't been announced yet. And then in 17, we always had planned for our own retail. First would be in New York City. Mm, so we, we have big plans, and we're right on target to grow just, uh, just as we had planned. That is so exciting, yeah, very yeah. exciting. Yes. And so um, from your perspective um, as the leader of this uh, re-emergence, re uh, is there anything that you can think of that um, that you either you know ha want to accomplish that you haven't already accomplished in the next uh, say 12 months so that if we were sitting back here uh, next January right. and we're looking at the year in review um, what is it that you're hoping that I can ask you about to say oh you know here you've accomplished this 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 and this what would that look like mm -hmm. what, what are you hoping that you're going to be able to tackle yes uh, which is very challenging mm -hmm. in the year ahead yes so my uh, what I aspire and dream about is when we set the e-commerce site we determined that we wanted to ship internationally mm -hmm. so we uh, engaged a company so that we could ship to 68 countries internationally even though we're not advertising we wanted to put our foot dig in our heels on we're a global brand mm -hmm. and um, being able to sh ship to 68 countries we do that free for any purchase over $300 mm -hmm. so it is a major investment and the other thing is is that we've shipped to Japan, Hong Kong, China, and England. So the, by my count, I have 64 more countries to go <laughs> till I meet my, uh, meet my goal of shipping to all 68 countries. But we really believe that we have this powerful global brand because the world loves great American heritage brands and Bill Blass is exactly that between the logo the name and uh, the, the rich history that we have. Yes, and I wish you the best of luck with this. Thank you. Because it, they couldn't have picked a better person thank to you. take it to I the I feel to that way. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us tonight on Top Growth, and we look forward to keeping you abreast of all of the developments uh, for Bill Blass. And remember to go to www.billblass.com and check out the company and also to friend them on Facebook and uh, connect on Twitter for all of the latest in fashion and color and the exciting new developments that are happening with this reemergence of this American iconic brand.